Well, you're most welcome to this video. And can you believe it's the last day of 2022? Just bear with me for about 20 seconds for a brief history lesson. Swine flu vaccine, 1976. There was one serious uh, adverse event per 100,000 uh, people vaccinated and the vaccine was withdrawn. Uh, this is good because the principle is we should do no harm and the vaccine should be good for the individual that receives the vaccine. So vaccine was withdrawn. Rotavirus vaccine, Rotashield, 1999. One to two serious adverse events per 10,000 people given the vaccine. And again, rightly, the vaccine was withdrawn. At the moment, COVID-19 mRNA vaccines, there's one serious adverse, uh, adverse event per 800 people that are vaccinated. And the vaccine is officially uh, promoted. Um, now, some of you might be a little confused about this. Um, join the club, so am I. Now, this information about 1 in 800 comes from a reanalysis of the original phase 3 trial um, studies from Pfizer and Moderna and here's the paper here that we're going to be looking at and if you need to dash off I'm just going to give you a quick summary of this so this is the paper here serious adverse events of special interest following mRNA COVID vaccines in randomized trials in adults these are the original trials full text is available there why we uh, question the safety profile of mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. Now, this is by two of the authors of the study, and it just gives a very useful summary. And the authors say this in their substack. Using uh, publicly available data from Pfizer and Moderna studies, and bear in mind the publicly available data is somewhat limited, we found one serious adverse event for every 100 people vaccinated. That translates to about one in... 1,250 serious events for each million vaccine recipients. Now, if you think of 1,250 serious adverse events per million vaccine recipients, and you think about the number of people that have been vaccinated with these mRNA vaccines, I'm not going to do a back-of-the-envelope calculation. I think you can see the, the import of this. Now, this was studied in, uh, published in this journal here, Vaccine which is actually um, part of the, uh, the Vaccine uh, Society of uh, Japan. Yet the authors were quite a, from quite a few places in the States, Spain and Australia. Um, it seems a pity that uh, American doctor scientists, Spanish and Australian doctor scientists need to publish in a Japanese-based uh, journal, um, but it is a fully peer-reviewed journal. So let's dive into the detail now. Study to evaluate serious adverse events of special interest observed in mRNA vaccine trials. These are the original trials that the original authorizations were based on. And they've done a secondary analysis of serious adverse events reported in placebo-controlled phase 3 randomized clinical trials. And the thing really to, to highlight here is these, these trials were genuinely uh, randomized. So the people in both groups are randomised, so any difference between the adverse reactions in both groups uh, is accounted for if, if the vaccine group has more side effects than the placebo group. Because the groups are randomised, that is a significant finding. Uh, needless to say, these weren't talked about much at the time. Pfizer and Moderna, they looked at both. Now the results... Pfizer and Moderna mRNA COVID-19 vaccines were associated with an excess risk of serious adverse events of special interest. So uh, there we have it. Clearly, uh, there are um, serious adverse events of special interest, as they are called. And of course, we've got some numerical data on this because they reanalyzed the original, uh, the original data that was now in the public domain. 10.1 per 10,000 vaccinated over the placebo baseline of 17.6 so there's an extra 10 uh, per 10,000 there Be bear in mind that in the previous uh, previous studies vaccines were withdrawn for way way lower that one's two to three uh, per 10,000 and the vaccine was withdrawn for the rotor shield Moderna, it was 15.1 per 10,000 uh, vaccinated over placebo baseline of 42. So again, we see quite a few extra people 
suffering side effects in the vaccine group compared to the placebo group. Combine the mRNA vaccines associated with an excess risk of serious adverse events of special interest of 12.5 per 10,000. And yet the vaccine is still in, uh, in use. Now, specific numbers here. The Pfizer trial um, in, the, in the vaccine group, 52 serious adver- uh, adverse events of special interest uh, were reported. That's 27 per 10,000 uh, vaccinated. Pfizer control group, it was 33. So 52 in the vaccine group, 32 in the uh, placebo group. And again, we can do statistics on these and do find there is a significant difference between these numbers. Uh, Specifically, 36% higher risk of serious adverse events in the vaccine group. Risk difference overall, 18 per 10,000 people vaccinated way higher than the numbers that caused the historical vaccines to be withdrawn by the CDC of previous years. Now, Moderna trial. Uh, The vaccine group in the Moderna trial, 87 adverse events of special interest. That's 57.3 per 10,000. The placebo group, it was 64. Might not sound like a huge difference, 87 to 64, but... Multiply that, that up by millions of people who have been vaccinated, and I think you start to get the, the impact of this. 6% higher serious risk of adverse events in the vaccine group in the case of Moderna. Remember, it was 36% in the case of the Pfizer vaccine. Now, they do discuss this. Um, the authors say this. The excess risk of serious adverse events found in our study points to the need for formal harm benefit analysis so this harm benefit analysis needs to be conducted with the harms which are now known about and the benefits that we will get now in the period of mass immunity as a result of the omicron variant that reanalysis needs to be done i would say urgently Uh, particularly those um, uh, particularly those that are stratified according to risks of serious outcomes of COVID-19 so again we need to know who is at higher risk of uh, COVID who is at higher risk of injury from the vaccines and these analyses will require public release of participant level data so the people that conducted these trials need to release the participant level data now the word is the FDA have this And of course, Pfizer and Moderna have this. This needs to be released. Then we can know who had the side effects, whether they were male or female, what age they were, what side effects they were getting, what level of protection they received. We need this participant level data because we are not short of brilliant data analysis in this world. We've got some brilliant data scientists who could analyse this and come up with hard data, but we're not allowed to know, Um, which is disappointing, to put it mildly. Full transparency of the COVID-19 vaccine clinical trial data is needed, the authors say, direct quote, to properly evaluate these questions. Unfortunately, as we approach two years after the release of COVID-19 vaccines, participant level data remain inaccessible. And that is to this group of international physicians and scientists. They can't get the data. Why is it being held secret? Why isn't it released into the public domain for mass peer review? Now let's just look at those things that that we uh, sketched out at the beginning. Levels of adverse events in the past. 1976, swine flu vaccine was withdrawn. Small increase in in, in Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a peripheral uh, polyneuritis. There's like an inflammatory, um, it's an inflammatory condition, again, in, in this situation caused by an immunological reaction that affects the peripheral nerves and causes paralysis can cause paralysis of breathing sometimes patients do tend to make a recovery but it can take some time i've certainly looked after patients in intensive care who have been in there for uh, weeks uh, indeed in in one case uh, months um, with Guillain-Barre syndrome so quite serious uh, so the, the risk was approximately one additional case of Guillain-Barre syndrome for every 100,000 people vaccinated who got the swine flu vaccine, uh, but they're given over 40 million vaccines. 
federal health uh, officials decided that the possibility of association with Guillain-Barre syndrome and the vaccine, however small, necessitated stopping immunisation until the issue could be explored. So they stopped it until the issue could be explored. Note that the swine, the swine flu vaccine programme was stopped until the doubts could be explored. And they were explored. Uh, not for a while, actually, in this case, but uh, the Institute of Medicine in 2003 did a further analysis on the risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome after the swine flu vaccine. And they concluded that people who received the 1976 swine flu vaccine had an increased risk for developing Guillain-Barre syndrome. We don't know why, um, but they, they did. So it was stopped because there was a risk. They didn't analyse the data, then stop it in 1976. They stopped it, then analysed the data. Uh, same with rotavirus, rotashield. Rotavirus, very common virus. In, in uh, Basically, everyone gets it. Very common in children. US Advisory Committee on Immunisation and Practice. Um, October the 22nd, 1999, they basically stopped it. No longer recommend the use of rotashield vaccine for infants typically under the age of one, because of an association between the vaccine and intersusception. Now, intersusception is a disease of the bowel. It happens in infants, typically under the age of one. And what happens is you have a, a, the bowel here and one part of the bowel gets drawn in. It's like a telescoping. And that means that the, uh, there's obstruction and it also blocks off the blood supply. And without treatment, of course, it's... Uh, well, it, it would be it would be fatal without treatment. Uh, fortunately, uh, interventional radiographers and surgeons are very very good at treating this and can do so readily. But uh, that that's what that condition is: a telescoping of the bowel. Uh, so anyway, it was stopped because of an association between the vaccine and intersusception. Uh, the results showed the the results showed of the investigation showed that Rotashield vaccine caused interception in some healthy infants and um okay uh interception increased 20 to 30 times over uh, two weeks a relatively short period of time uh, but but that actually worked out at uh, one or two additional cases of interception would be caused amongst each 10,000 infants that were uh, vaccinated so there you go what we've seen in this video is this uh, swine flu vaccine with withdrawn for one serious uh, adverse event per 100,000 vaccinated. Vaccine withdrawn. Rotavirus, 1999, one to two serious adverse events per 10,000 vaccinated. Vaccine withdrawn. COVID vaccines based on the original phase three clinical trial data from Pfizer and Moderna. Um, one serious adverse event per 800. Vaccine officially promoted. Uh, You'll be as confused as I am, but they're the numbers. And uh, they, they did actually define what they meant by serious adverse events, but unfortunately I'm not allowed to uh, to say that uh, at the moment. But it is defined. If you um, want to read the paper, make sure what I'm not making this up. And you'll find full details. This is the full text that is uh, available of this reanalysis of the original uh, phase three trial uh, data sets. Um, who knew about this level of adverse events when? Uh, did the people writing the original paper know this? Because it's not really obvious when you read the original paper. Um, quite a few people in those days believed that it was in a, it was in a um, peer-reviewed journal we could pretty well accept it on face value uh, those days have gone we'll leave it there because i don't want to say too much and um, i'm as confused as you are so thank you for watching